Most people find grammar boring. Yeah.、Um, Honestly, personally, I don't understand why. <laughs> It's so fascinating <laughs> to understand, you know, why, you know, the, like the structure of the language. But you know, maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. But so most people don't like studying English grammar because they find it boring. Because it usually is, right? Well, in today's episode, Chiago, our fluency coach, will tell you why he loves learning English grammar and finds it an Absolutely fascinating aspect of the language, and how you can learn it in a fun way. But if this is your first time joining us here on the Real Life Podcast, welcome! Every week we create fun lessons like this one to help English learners like you go from feeling like a lost and insecure English learner to being a confident, natural English speaker. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell down below so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. So Chiago, let's talk about it. Most people simply don't like studying English grammar. You, on the other hand, have told me you absolutely love it. So, can you tell me why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure.、Um, I love grammar. I've always loved it, mainly because、um, I think I am an inquisitive type of person.、Um, I like to understand the why of things. So, when I was learning English, I remember that just learning how to say something. Or how to write a sentence、uh, wasn't enough for me. I really wanted to understand why I was supposed to say it that way or write it that way. So、um, I understand that maybe not many people or not everybody is wired that way. But in my case, I am a person who likes to understand the why of things. So naturally, that that curiosity of mine led me to study more grammar because sometimes I will go, I will look at a sentence. And go. Okay, I understand the meaning of this sentence. I understand the context I'm supposed to use this sentence in. But why? Why do I use this or this word order, for example? Or why do I use this auxiliary verb here? This don't or this haven't. You know. So naturally, that curiosity led me to studying grammar. But the cool thing is that as I started to study more and more grammar, I started to develop this、uh, deeper understanding of the language. You know, so、uh, that really that was very beneficial to me. I would say to my learning because、um, then、uh, not only was I using English and speaking it, but also I knew what I was doing in the sense that okay, I want to communicate this idea. I'm going to use this structure right now. You know, so、um, that is one reason I can give. You know, this curiosity, this、uh, need to understand why. I I like the word you used. You said. Uh, what does it mean to be wired in a particular way? You said you were. Some people、mm -hmm. are not wired in that way. What does that mean? Yeah, it's about your constitution, how your maybe how your mind or your brain processes information. Yeah, maybe some people, like I said, they they don't need this. They don't need to understand the why、mm -hmm. of you know、uh, the of language, for example. You know, you just need to learn how to say what you want to say, and you roll with it. That's fine. Yeah, but in my case.、Yeah. Uh, You know, I am wired a little bit differently. I like to understand why I'm using、yeah. the things I'm using in English. You know. Yeah. So, so being wired in a particular way is like your sort of natural way of the way that you process information and the way that you do things, the way that you behave. So, yeah, it makes <laughs> it makes sense in this context. Absolutely, I agree.、Um, I think I'm one of those people, the other type that like might not always、um, think about the grammar first. I'm curious to know. Like, how did you get to this point of realizing that this was actually working? Like, this way of thinking was actually benefiting you in your English learning. Yeah, I started actually by studying grammar. I used to have a grammar book, and、uh, I would make it a goal to study between thirty minutes to one hour of grammar every day. And each day, I would study a different tense or a different structure of the language. And then, the cool thing about grammar books, I find, is that you know you have the explanation. Of that topic with some examples, and then they tell you all the possible situations you can use that kind of structure. And then after you study that page, you can do the exercises to consolidate what you just studied or read on the next page. And the grammar book that I had also had the answer key in the back. So after that, I could check my work to see if I had gotten most of it correctly or not. You know, so it was a it was geared towards self studying, 
yeah. Uh, but then, you know, I enjoyed it yeah? because you know, it, was, it was like um, I like to compartmentalize information too. Again, going back to the way your brain is wired, I like to compartmentalize things. I think uh, we did a, an episode together, Cassie, where I was talking about that. Uh, remember the you you told me about the the puzzle, the puzzle analogy or metaphor, right? Uh, my brain also works kind of like that. Like you know, first I would categorize the simple tenses present, past, future, I would study them. And then the perfect tenses, you know, present, past, future, and then move on like that to more complicated or complex structures. The more, the cool thing about grammar, I think, is that the more you understand it and practice it, the more automatic speaking and writing become to you. Um, so one metaphor I can give here is going to driving school, you know, learning how to drive. Uh, usually, you know, you go to the driving school, uh, you get your driver's license, but you're not really completely ready yet to, you know, get out there and drive. Like, you know, you don't do it so naturally yet. Even though you, you have just got the, the license, you still have to think a lot about the mechanics of driving, right? Like, you know, uh, you got to worry about the steering wheel or the different paddles or you got to adjust the mirrors, you know? So, Usually you pay attention to these mechanic things first, you know, before it becomes natural to you. It's okay. It's part of the process. But what, what, what usually happens is um, after a while, the more you practice driving, the more you, you get to that point where you don't even think about these things anymore. You, you just drive. Yeah. So it comes to a point where you drive naturally, let's say. You don't have to think about the mechanics of it anymore because you've done it so many times. So... The same thing happens with grammar. Maybe at the beginning of your journey, or if you're not so experienced with English yet, you might be thinking more about the language, the grammar, you know, and it feels unnatural a little bit, which is supposed to feel unnatural. But if you keep doing that with time, it becomes second nature to you. And then you start using those structures or speaking English without even thinking about it anymore. Because at the end of the day, that's what we all want, right? We want to sound automatic, effortless, confident in English, and, you know, ideally, not making as many mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. The important thing is communication, but also we want to communicate to the best of our abilities that without making too many mistakes when we speak English, right? I, I love this imagery of, of, like, learning to drive because there's so many, over, you become overwhelmed, like when you think of a car and like you first get into the car, it's like, what, what does this do? What does that do? You know, it can be overwhelming. So I think this is a, an excellent analogy. Like learning to drive is it doesn't happen overnight. You really have it takes practice. And this is exactly your point, right? Like it. And I think for those of us who are wired differently, I think the, the point here that you're making is quite nice because it takes it requires effort and it requires time. Um, you use the word consolidate. Uh, what does that mean? I, I mean, you used it quite earlier on, but I, I like that word. Yeah, we usually use that when talking about education. When you are learning something, usually first you study the theory of it, right? Let's say that studying grammar is like reading the manual, you know, before, I don't know, operating a machine or something. So it's the theory, yeah? So first you read about the theory, you learn the theory. But then you consolidate that theory by practicing it, by doing some exercises, mm -hmm. by living your English in this case, which is, you know, watching uh, videos in English and trying to look for those grammar structures you are practicing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, consolidating is the practice side of it. Um, I'd like to ask you as well, like you, you mentioned some key words here you mentioned like it becoming automatic and it becoming you know go f going from feeling like it's sort of mechanic to being automatic and isn't it ironic because these words are also referred to car um there's also car words like a mechanic i mean like it's it's quite interesting like the method yeah. <laughs> i find it quite hilarious like an yeah, automatic car is. anyway so i wonder if there's more about this metaphor that makes sense yeah, sure, there is. Uh, one thing that uh, I've noticed is that, uh, let's go back to driving, right? Um, usually when people learn how to drive younger, before 18, like, you know, in an informal way, maybe, a, I don't know, a, a, their uncle or their father 
you know, I taught them or they just learn by themselves, you know. What usually happens is those people, they tend to develop bad habits when driving. So by the time they go to driving school at 18 or, you know, whatever, uh, they carry with them these uh, fossilized mistakes or these uh, bad habits. So it becomes more difficult to break those bad habits. For example, the correct way, at least here in Brazil, to drive is both hands at the wheel. Why both hands at the wheel? Because, you know, you should need to make a quick turn, you know, like fast, you know, you have more control of the car rather than if you're just driving with one hand, you know? So uh, taking that to English now, uh, I, I have met many students like that, actually. I know people who were studying English for years already, and because they didn't have enough grammar work, early on, or because they didn't pay much attention to it, they developed these uh, fossilized mistakes, we say, these bad habits with the language, which, if you look at it from a, commun from a communication standpoint, is okay, because, you know, we can still understand what they say, but they carry with them that mistake. L let me give you an example. Let's say that a learner is used to always saying, uh, he go to school. He go to school every day. He go to school every day. This is, it doesn't interfere with the communication because you still understand what I'm saying. But the correct way is he goes, right? He goes to school every day. But if nobody corrects that learner or if that learner never stops to study the simple present tense in this case, that learner after years will get used or will internalize that mistake and think that it's okay. Like, you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. So... The person is going to keep saying he go to school every day, even though it's not correct. And then when, you know, I have classes with a student like that, I notice that it's much harder to correct that mistake because, you know, the person hasn't been making that for years. So it's harder to break that habit. So um, that is one downside, I would say, of not focusing so much on grammar too, you know, um, developing bad habits with the language, fossilized mistakes. Um, I, I was just wondering if, like, everyone knows what a what fossilized means. Like, I know, that obviously, it makes sense in context, but can you explain mm -hmm. what it means when something is fossilized? What does that mean? Uh, maybe you can help me with that definition, Cassie, but I, I view it as uh, something that is hardened. You know, it's f mm. like it becomes a mm -hmm. fossil, <laughs> literally. Yeah, exactly, like, you know, um, yeah. It's hard to break it or change it. It becomes, like, stiff. How, is that correct, the definition? Yeah, 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 exactly. You you mentioned fossils, like we think of dinosaur bones or, <laughs> you know, bones from, I don't know, ancient man. <laughs> so I think when we think about these things, we can think of fossils as, you know, things from a long time ago that become hard like rock. So learning grammar is all about learning patterns. And, you know, if you think about the, you know, for example, verb tenses always have the same structure. You just need to observe what the structure is and apply it to create new sentences with it. Um, you know, I'd like to just share something very, like, funny that I, I was thinking about when we spoke about doing this episode. I was thinking about when I started learning, I don't think about it in English. I've actually, you know, I'm, I'm doing my TEFL course again because I'll be teaching young learners. And so I need to know about these kinds of um, new ways of, of teaching grammar. And there was in, an interesting point about, you know, when you're learning your first language, you don't tend to, fossilized mistakes tend not to happen <laughs> with your first language. It's easy, like you, you tend to realize the mistake a lot faster, right? So as you know, I'm bilingual. So with my second language, this happened. I noticed now immediately because I became more aware of it. I became, learning the second language became fun. And so when I think about this uh, topic, it reminds me of how I learned my second language. Like with Afrikaans, it was like that. It became a fun exercise that I did um, to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's, it's more like comp compartment compartmentalizing. Um, uh -huh. you know, these, these ideas or these concepts. So I'm thinking about how um, my teachers taught that to me when I was younger, because of course I was in an English class, but they're teaching it in fully in, they're not using English, they're using Afrikaans. And my parents also speak Afrikaans, but, you know, sometimes. So um, I think about how I would teach that, to, you know, make it fun and, and interesting for young learners to be able to grow up thinking of the language as you know, something that they can have fun with. 
and um yeah exactly like there are patterns as you as we've so, spoken about so let's talk a little bit more about you know it being fun let's <laughs> let's get into that yeah you mentioned at the beginning right Cassie, that most people find grammar boring yeah um Honestly, personally, I don't understand why. <laughs> it's so fascinating <laughs> to understand, you know, why, you know, the, like the structure of the language. But, you know, maybe I'm crazy, yeah? but okay. Uh, but You're the not. point is, uh, it can be fun. Yeah, you can make it fun. So, for example, let's say um, you use movies and series to identify the grammar points you are studying. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be only with the grammar book. You can also use that with real media. Uh, let me give an example here. Yeah, we have a short clip from the movie The Lord of the Rings where the character Frodo tells Gandalf that he feels sad for what happened to him, all right? So first, let's watch the clip. Um, T is here in the studio with us. He's going to roll it for us. And then uh, I'm going to break down one specific structure that we hear Frodo using here, all right? I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. All right, so here we hear Frodo using the phrase, I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish the ring had never come to me. We can use this structure to express regret. For something. So, um, looking at the clip here, or even if you are listening, uh, let me just give you some context here. Frodo feels he's having a moment of weakness, yeah, because you now if you know the story, uh, he is um, given the responsibility at the beginning of the story to carry this ring to Mordor, yeah, and uh, it becomes uh, a challenging journey for him at some point, with many obstacles and you know, uh, and enemies to to fight. So. He's in a moment of weakness now, expressing this regret, this feeling of, oh, I wish the ring had never come to me. The structure here is, I wish, plus past perfect, okay? Which is had or hadn't, plus past participle. So, for example, imagine the situation. Imagine you go on a trip, and you bring your old laptop on this trip. But then, your laptop stops working during the trip. And then you go like, ah, my laptop broke because it was too old. Okay, that's the situation. Now let me express some regret about this. I wish I had bought a new laptop before traveling. You see? I wish I had bought mm -hmm. a new laptop before traveling because now I can't use it. Yeah? And it's the same structure we see here Frodo using. I wish the ring had never come to me. But you see, I mean, uh, one thing that I find fascinating, Cassie, about grammar is that, is because, you know, grammar gives you the tools, actually, to communicate these more complex ideas. Because, you know, maybe you want to communicate a very specific idea. Like in this case, I want to express this regret about something that happened in the past, but I don't know how to do it. So by studying a little bit of the grammar of it, learning the structure, it's like you're going to increase or improve your repertoire right? Your language repertoire, yeah? And then uh, you will be able to communicate uh, more things, you know? And um, I've had students like that, like, you know, sometimes they want to communicate more complex ideas or different ideas, but they don't have the, the structure, the knowledge of the structures in place yet. So, you know, they try to, you know, speak in a certain way and we try to understand them, yeah? But, you know, that's, I think... Um, you know, an example of the importance of studying a little bit of grammar, adding a little bit of grammar to your routine as well. I agree with you. I think it's 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 the foundation. It's the building blocks, like you like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. When you know where to place the bricks, you <laughs> are able to do more. You're able to build a house. Imagine, yeah, I think it's, that's a nice analogy. You could think of a wall. You have <laughs> lots of bricks. You have you can yeah. if you place them randomly, you're not going to build anything. <laughs> But if mm -hmm. you place them in the correct order, you're going to build a house, you're going to build a castle mm -hmm. or a wall, something useful. So, Akasi, could you share some examples now in the negative form from this structure we just saw? I wish plus past participle, or actually, I wish plus past perfect. Yeah. So, if we use it in the negative, we would say, I wish I hadn't, I wish I had not, 
blah 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 so an example would be i wish i hadn't skipped the gym yesterday because now i feel icky or i wish i had not stayed up all night watching tv <laughs> because now i'm really tired so yeah you can use it in that way i think it's exactly the same so in each of these examples i'm expressing regret as you mentioned before um, about something that i did in the past so as you can see as well like i wish i hadn't is basically showing remorse for an action that you had done in in that particular situation so like all this talk about grammar <laughs> like reminds me that you know if you want to improve in this area i guess the only thing you can do is to practice it the only way you're going to get better at it is to practice it and what better way to do that than to find a speaking partner to do that with um and you mentioned earlier on that you did it for you did it basically on a consistent basis and this is how you were able to improve your grammar and i think when you have a speaking partner it makes it a lot more fun right so another fun thing you can do for practice is of course to use this podcast to identify new grammar points in the conversation that we are having and what's great is that you can download our app right now to get the full transcript of this week's episode and that brings us to our shout out. So, Tiago, could you share that with us? Yeah, sure. We have here a shout out to Sonia. And Sonia says, this is definitely one of the best applications for anyone who doesn't feel confident regarding their speaking skills. You meet people from all over the world and know that there's a whole lot of people who struggle with English like you. And that's what connects us as well as makes us actually enjoy it and not stress out about it. Nice. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. That's really great. So if you want to be like Sonia and improve your speaking skills, then download the app right now and also leave us a five star review. And who knows, we might be shouting you out next week. All right, so let's move on to this week's big challenge. You know, there is a saying that goes practice makes perfect, but I don't think that's absolutely true. But one thing I do know is that practice makes it automatic, you know? So the more you practice something, the more automatic or second nature it becomes to you. So you can start practicing right now. The question is, what is one interesting grammatical structure that you've noticed us using in this podcast today? Write a sentence in the comments using that same grammatical structure, or you can just send us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com. So, for example, let's say that uh, you've noticed that Cassie or myself used the present perfect yeah, during this uh, conversation today. Create a present perfect sentence and share it in the comment section below, or send us an email. Yeah, so that's a great way for you to practice new grammar structures you're learning. Yeah, so that's it. I, I think that you are always so inspiring, Tiago, when you talk about, you know, grammar and your journey. And I think everything you've shared today was valuable, even if you're not, you know, <laughs> wired that way like me. I think thinking of it as a car and thinking of the metaphorical, you know, thinking of like going from being, um, you know, boring, like, oh, I have to learn this step. I have to learn this rule to it being like, yeah. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna become like a automatic <laughs> driver. Yeah, Cassie, thank you for that. And I do believe in that saying that goes: success leaves clues, right? Success leaves clues. So, uh, I've been reading some of the comments here on YouTube, and it's wonderful to see how many people uh, that relate to my journey with English, to my story. They find inspiration in it. That's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. It's amazing. Yeah, I feel very thankful for that. But this is me leaving you a little clue, you know? If you like the way I speak English, look, I paid attention to grammar. Yeah, I actually studied grammar. I spent a few years of my journey dedicating to that. So you don't have to love it, but here's a little clue for you. Maybe pay a little bit more attention to it. Yeah, if you want to sound maybe like, like me. Yeah, you know, if you have me as, a, as your English speaking model. All right, it's the clue. All right, guys. So that's all we have for this episode. So stay tuned for next week's episode. And we're looking forward to seeing you all then. One, two, three. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. 
man, when I saw that for the first time, I was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> you know, that's it. <laughs> Because, you know, uh, and that's how I, I operate or I have operated most of my life. You know, like I never let these things kind of bring me down. Like, you know, hey, I'm going to tell you I don't know, but I will find the answer. I will find a way to get the job done or to be successful at this or that thing. Right. So and I think that 